Good morning, Toronto. Paul Andrigo here, Toronto Real Estate Unfiltered, Toronto Real Estate Podcast on Instagram. So, first thing I hear today in the news, and I've seen it posted in a few places, is that the government is talking about banning the practice of bully offers. Huh. So, where do I begin? Um, a few years ago, I had the situation come up where I was in the process of selling a property, uh, and what I did in my listing, which I believe was uh, revolutionary at the time, was I added three words, Pre, uh, four words, preemptive offers welcome. So that meant bully offers were welcome before the bidding date. This is something I had discussed with my sellers, uh, and they agreed to. So we put that in the listing. Um, let's just say that I had a, a few people, some that were you know, brave enough to, to, to discuss it with me, you know, directly to my face, uh, and some cowards who decided to um, blog about it, and uh, they knew who they are, uh, and still have not uh, faced me personally. And that's fine. That kind of just lets me know, you know, who I want to deal with in the future and, and not. But back to this point. The, 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 the statement is that bully offers are somehow unfair to sellers. So let's, let's break this down. So sellers have the opportunity, when they're selling their property, they have the opportunity to put an offer date. That's something that's been from, from the beginning of time, even though it wasn't something that was always done. Uh, the seller calls the shop. They could decide. You could send, let's say the, the property is a million dollars. You could send someone an offer for, you know, $3 million, and the seller can decide not to take the, 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 the offer. They can decide to take an a, a $800,000 offer when given the choice. They can make any choice they want when you're selling your property. I believe that's fair. I believe that the seller should have the choice. When you own your property as a, as a, as a homeowner, um, you should be able to decide how the property is sold. And, and if, if the buyers agree, then, of course, they will bid. But if they don't agree, then, again, no one shows up. Whenever and behind the scenes of how it works in real estate is not every property that has an offer date gets offers on that date. That's just not how it works. It's just one of many, and, and I call it the one of the 26 plans that we have in real estate, obviously for every alphabet letter. So plan A, plan B, plan C, there's always some, you know, there's always other plans, and there, there's some properties that started doing um, offer dates that I've seen uh, as long as two years ago that are still not sold because they just didn't get the number right. So it's, it's a marketing effort. There, there's, there's lots of them. So my point is, if the sellers can do what they If the sellers can do what they need to do and, and want to do, and if they're able to do a bidding war, an auction-style setup, I believe the buyers should have the equal opportunity because when, when a listing is put up, again, behind-the-scenes stuff, when a listing is put up, the seller has the right to say yes or no to preemptive offers, and, and they can choose to review them at their own will, just like they can choose to review any price range uh, or any price offer that they get. So for me, it's only fair that if bidding wars are still allowed, then bully offers should also be allowed. That is, in some cases, the only advantage some buyers might have. Now, bully offers doesn't just mean sending in any offer early. That's, that's the other misconception. Um, if you're going to put a bully offer in, I'm, I'm not going to ever tell my buyers that, you know, you're not going to come in at asking or 5% below asking and, and, and get a place that's asking for bully offers. You have to sort of, like any eBay auction, you've got to predict, well, they, you know, they, 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 they put the starting price of a dollar, uh, but they want a dollar fifty. So that part involves a little bit of educated guessing, and I'm pretty good at getting you that number saying, I'm pretty sure this is what they want, knowing that properties in their area have sold for 20% over asking. 
they're probably looking for something like X price. So if you're going with a, with a bully offer, then a preemptive offer, whatever you want to call it, um, you know, you will be going in pretty strong. Um, you will be getting your, in my, in my case, when you're buying with me, I would ask you to get your financing, your inspection, anything, any conditions that you would normally put on the offer, you would have them covered and, and handled before the offer gets put in. And that's it. Like you, you should have as a buyer that opportunity um, to 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 play on a level surface, and and I I find it almost um, uh, insulting, for that matter, for uh, anyone, whether it's the government or anybody else, to say that it's an unfair advantage to the sellers. Because again, whether you're and this is this is another part of me. The one thing that I I don't do is I don't work on the buying and selling side of any of my properties. It's just something that, um, A, I've never been comfortable with even when it was allowed, uh, and it still is in Ontario allowed. It's not allowed in BC, but you'll still see it happening in Ontario uh, quite often, especially with the big teams. Um, so I, I'm not a, I'm not a big fan of that. When I'm you know when I was on the rugby field, I spent a, a good decade of my life on the rugby field, uh, learning all the important life lessons, uh, and, and one thing I can tell you that I learned on that field is that you could never play on both sides of the team at the same time. Not in any sport, hockey, football, you name it, rugby. Um, so for me, I am 110 and 1,000, whatever percent you want to use, exaggerated number, uh, is fine because that's the way it is for me. When I'm on one side of the equation, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm all in on making sure that I'm representing my clients properly and, and, and above and beyond average and treating whoever's on the other side with fairness and equity as well. So, and that sometimes just means being direct to both sides. Uh, for me, it's always been that way. And I always want to end off any negotiation with, of course, a, you know, a good feeling that, you know, the, the buyer's you know, the sellers got what they wanted, um, the buyers got what they wanted, and, and, and everybody's, you know, happy with the, the final outcome. Because again, when you're at that level of negotiating, that six and seven figure level, um, there's no room for regret. So you want both sides to be fully aware of what's going on and, and fully able to, um, you know, understand the consequences of, 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 of each situation. Um, I also add to the to the equation is that you need to understand as a selling agent when I am one, which is quite often, I also need to know as much as I need as much as I can about the buyer's financial situation. The end bids, for example, let's say someone decides to bid a hundred thousand or two hundred thousand over asking, that's I mean, that's a nice number on paper, but that still is only on paper. So I don't know if the property is going to the, the appraisal of the property is going to match the the finance the, the buyer's financing. So I ask um, my sellers normally to get their own independent appraisal. This is one of the things, one of the many things that I do behind the scenes, um, along along with getting an inspection done by a by a professional inspector uh, and having a look up and down the house, basically preparing for every scenario. Uh, that is going to come up and then dealing with it on a marketing level, meaning that before we're selling it, everything is a marketing effort. When you're after it's sold, it, it becomes a lot more complicated if it's the buyer telling you that there's some issue with the property. It becomes, um, I believe that as a seller, you're you're at a disadvantage. So, um, you know, it the, the, the cost, and I, I've, I, I think over the years I could say that the cost of getting the inspection done, which ranges about $500, um, you know, easily it's worth that. But in a lot of cases, it's worth 10 times that much because... Finding out after the fact, and let's say you get an offer in, it's been two weeks on the market, someone comes in, they find $5,000 worth of uh, issues on their home inspection, uh, you're in no position at that time, in some cases, to negotiate. So you have to uh, work with them. It's far better that you know, again, everything about your property, and that's my job, is to tell you, here's what we need to do to find out everything about the property. So when you're dealing with offers and bully offers, preemptive, whatever you want to call it, uh, I, again, I'm just of the opinion that a buyer should have the opportunity, again, even if it's, and I've, I've seen this in, in some realtor groups mention that even if it says no preemptive offers, uh, there are some people that decide to send it anyways. I think that's part of a free market society. That's what, I mean, you're supposed to be allowed 
to send in a, a bully offer and it doesn't have to be reviewed uh, and it doesn't have to be uh, considered but it's up to the buyer to do that and it's on my side as the selling agent uh, of course whether or not my seller is going to allow that so I will not um, you know proceed on any bully offers if they say specifically to me in writing they do not want to review but some of them have over the years say so yes I'll, I'll consider something before the offer date um, and in that case I'll make sure that it's written in uh, and then it's explained fairly to everybody that you know the right offer is is uh, is going to you know possibly sell the property so again if buyer if, if bidding wars if if if, if buyer sorry <laughs> if bully offers are unfair then bidding wars are also unfair. So I, I think that if one goes, they both have to go. And literally then I believe they'll, you know, they'll see that there's no advantage to doing that. So if you're going to um, make some changes, in my opinion, to the system, I believe that the right way to go uh, is to, again, le let, let buyers have their, the, the advantages that they have, uh, leave those in place. The sellers are allowed to, again, propose their their listing propose their marketing the way they see fit um, you know that will best benefit them the buyers have their choices that they can use again in a free open market this is not where you know you want uh, to have you know people who are completely you know outside of the negotiation deciding how you need to bid uh, what's the right way to do I, I believe this is something that buyers um, should have the option to do or not and sellers should have the option to accept or not because um, that's that's what real estate is. And yes, in some areas it's extremely competitive. Yeah, I get it. It's 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 part of how real estate works for the most part. But at the end of the day, no one's no one's making any buyer, you know, jump to the table to bid. There's no you know there's no forced anything. Um, whether it's renting, if that's their, their choice, then no one's forcing anyone to rent a certain property. It's really, uh, you know, in, in a position where, again, we have all, all the options that we do. Um, I, I do believe that buyers should have the option to, again, proceed on a bully offer if they wish um, and not have that option removed from the table. Um, because, again, I believe it'll be an unfair advantage to sellers. And I want sellers that I work with to, again, have every advantage. I want the buyers, not even, not my clients. These are other people working, you know, with other agents when it's my listing. Uh, I want them to have the, again, whatever it is that they need, um, you know, to be able to proceed in, in a safe manner and uh, and, and basically uh, secure the property. And, 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 I'm, and I'm talking about, again, and I tell people this all the time, like even when you look at a list price, for the most part, in most neighborhoods, it might be valid. But in a lot of cases, the, what the list price is, basically, it, it's it's sort of irrelevant to what the value of the property is, which is why I tell everybody I'm working with, regardless of, again, whether I'm, if, you're, if I'm your buying agent and your selling agent, I'm not going to be the same person on the same property ever. So I do this very often. I'll, I'll sell a person's home and, and the day later, I'm, you know, my buyer hat, I do that over the top uh, movie um, move where you spin the hat around and I become the buyer agent. And, and again, I am, you know, driven on that. Uh, and I'll make sure that everything's done right there once the other thing is done. Um, and, and make sure that, again, that my buyers understand that, you know, you need to look at, you know, uh, not just, you know, um, what the asking price is, but what things are actually selling for. So ordering a copy of mysoldreport.com, uh, which is part of anybody who works with me, you get this, you know, very thorough breakdown of what happens behind the scenes. In some neighborhoods that I'm very frequent, uh, very um, active in, I also know a lot of the details meaning, you know, the type of offers that are coming in, the type of deposits being dealt with, um, if any agents who have been putting offers in um, have uh, removed those offers. There's a lot of things. I keep a lot of notes on this. And, and I do this because, again, I like to make sure that anybody who hires me is getting way more value than the cost of hiring me. And as a buyer, uh, you might know this already, as a buyer, uh, you're not specifically paying me. My, f my fees come from the listing side. When I'm selling, of course, the seller's the one paying my fees. Um, 
and there's a lot of uh, you know there's a lot of details within that that you should know as well especially for those of you moving out of the city or moving into Toronto from places outside for work uh, there's a lot of advantages that you need to understand and, and in some cases uh, it even includes uh, the opportunity to um, to 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 have a to, to 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 make my fees completely tax deductible. So you need to understand if you're moving to Toronto, 40 kilometers or more uh, within Ontario, you're moving for work. Uh, there are actually specific advantages that again, none of this stuff is ever talked about. It's it's just the other the, the little details. Sometimes the ones that you know the the details that matter less. I believe um, th- there's a lot bigger things that again I hope. When we're when we're together at the at the you know at the coffee shop at your house uh, looking at properties which I'm on my way to do right now um, when we're talking about this stuff one on one there's so many things uh, and I can't even possibly and I won't um, get into them here simply because I I, I just don't think the audience. Um, will you know we won't be able to connect on things uh, and as Frank Zappa said when it comes to communicating I mean it, it really what's missing in 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 whether it's recorded or uh, typed information the eyebrows uh, emotion um, expressions things like that without those I can't actually do all the things I want to do I can do some of them but and this is why this podcast is great because I can do a lot of explaining that communication. Uh, we you know we, we're sort of we're opening up a dialogue right now. Right now it's a monologue, but it, it opens up some conversations. But as far as in, in you know being together, sitting across from each other, you know just being in the same room, um, discussing all the details. That's the only time, and that's why this will never be an automated or a robotic experience. And and you know you're never gonna you're never gonna be able to do this off a screen one. 100%. There are so many intricate details. There's, you know, there's a, there's a list of about a hundred plus things that can go wrong in a transaction that, uh, again, a lot of people aren't, aren't ever told about. They're not, you know, they're not, um, you know, they're not fully versed on. And th- th- these are the kind of things that I, I do in my buyer and seller boot camp programs. It's something that I'm uh, very adamant about. I want you guys to know, I, I've been doing this now 19 years. I want you to know everything, good, bad, ugly, and then you decide. And this, and this is how, you know, for, for a lot of us that, uh, you know, that have been involved in real estate, I've purchased and sold a few homes over the years myself. Um, sometimes you, you, you know, you, you hear the good, you hear the bad and you do it anyways. So you decide on what level of risk that you're comfortable with in life. Uh, and then you decide, okay, you know what, I'm, I'm going to go for this. I, I think it's going to work out for me. And, um, you just know inside as you get older, especially, I can tell you right now, from my 20s to my 40s, bought my first house in my early 20s um, and uh, continue to you know, buy a few more houses right into my 30s um, and have been at the house that uh, we own now for, you know, over the last uh, uh, 07 we bought it, so uh, over 12 years now. So um, very comfortable with, the again, the risks that I've taken because the rewards have been uh, quite good. And I want that for you guys too. And and I always say that anything that happens with me, any sale that I'm part of, which I'm very grateful for, um, I'm always hoping to pay it forward twice. Not once, but twice. Um, and in the case of right now with my 100 Souls campaign that I'm on, uh, is my goal is to help five to 10 people a month make a move. I'm hoping in some way, buying, selling, and even renting is fine. Um, but to help five or 10 people a month make a move. And if I can, I can then provide up to 25 to 50 meals for the homeless in those communities, uh, which for me is, is absolutely the, the, the best end result last year at, 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 during the holidays, during Christmas, uh, I was able to provide dinner for 21 people, um, at the Scott mission. And that was something I set as sort of a, a goal for myself as I've, as I helped 21 people last year. So I've, um, increased my goals. I want to be able to provide 25 uh, at least meals per month um, every month if I if I can and again I can't do that without the support of you know the amazing people here the almost 11,000 of you that are listening around the world um, many of many of which are clients now and I'm hoping many of which will be clients soon but again for me this is all all the stuff I'm talking about this is all part of uh, you know the process of again choosing the right realtor if you're going to be in an active market like this I mean you know uh, whether it's Toronto whether it's New York whether it's Los Angeles whatever the market 
market is. I've, I've got amazing people in all of those places that I, you know, work with regularly. I, I've actually sold. Um, I've worked with, uh, you know, a one-on-one with um, uh, an agent in New York State recently to uh, to secure land for an incredible client of mine here. It's really important that you guys understand that this collaboration, this teamwork with us, even between you, me, and, and again, just you know, when I'm buying or selling your properties, I don't care if it's your first condo or if it's your first mansion, and hopefully uh, I can help you from one right to the next one. Uh, and I've done that actually over the years. I've helped people go from first condo uh, to, again, what I would call first mansions and uh, move on from there. And I wanna do that for everybody listening. So uh, bottom line, let me help you guide. Let me guide you through the process, and I promise you, uh, every time I do, it will be rewarding. And again, you'll come out a lot stronger through the process, and uh, uh, you know you'll know a lot more than the average bear does. And uh, and again, it'll it'll be a good thing for you.